Well, it's now 10 to 10 in the morning here in Dublin, in Ireland, and Donald Trump has lost the his attempt to be re-elected as President of the United States. This has happened because Congress has voted in favour of Joe Biden. What this means in practice is that the final decision on the presidency in fact lies at Congress. So what has happened has been constitutional and is entirely legal and entirely lawful, but that does not make it right. However, that does not either change the fact that indeed two weeks from now Donald Trump will leave office as President of the United States of America. This is a disappointment for a lot of people. It's a disappointment for me. I was always a supporter of Trump from the moment he declared his candidacy and I always will be a supporter of Trump. But like Trump himself and like so many others, I believe in constitutionality. I believe in the enforcement of the law and those who know the US Constitution know that in a dispute or in any contested situation, which is what we had this time, that the final decision on the presidency does rest with Congress. Perhaps I was naive. I thought Congress would do the right thing and do an Andrew Jackson as they did in 1820 and put in a president who had neither won the popular vote nor the Electoral College. They did not. Ultimately, they chickened out. Um, there is a saying, don't want something too hard, it might come true. An awful lot of people claimed or said that they wanted a Biden presidency. Well, they're getting it. Now, how that turns out could be anybody's guess. Tarl Warwick or Stix Hexenhammer refers to it as an asterisk presidency. I think that puts it very well. It means that although constitutionally and legally Biden will get the presidency, that doesn't mean that we'll have any moral legitimacy or any proper moral weight in the eyes of very, very many people. There are very grave doubts about the legitimacy of the public vote in the 2020 US presidential election. Those doubts are not going to go away. Donald Trump is not going to go away. The people who supported him are not going to go away. That may leave it open for Trump to run again in 2024. I personally think that he should not. And there's a specific reason for that. The reason why is that Donald Trump actually succeeded in his four years in the presidency with one particular thing. He showed up the crookedness of the system. And we saw that now in the past two hours in which we saw the cowardice of so many Republican senators and, and um, representatives who did not back the Republican president. Many of them did. Ted Cruz did. For all of the slagging that Cruz got and the abuse that he got for such a long time, he actually stood up to the plate. But it was not to be. Um, whether Donald Trump likes it or not... He has just been administered the biggest red pill in history and the largest pair of black glasses. What I say to Mr. Trump is, from all of us out here in red pill, black glasses land, welcome. Three hours ago, you joined us. Three hours ago, you joined us. I got my red pill finally in 2019 when I saw that RTG were telling lies to cover Leo Varadkar. I want to just say that specifically. RTE was telling lies to legitimise Leo Varadkar and to make Varadkar look good. They have been continuing to do so, but there was one specific instance in 2019 where I personally caught them telling lies. So that for me was the point at which I said, well, <clears throat> RTE are telling lies and we have a crooked mainstream media. Then we had a general election in Ireland in 2020 in which the Irish people had the opportunity to reject Fine Gael and they chose not to. Fine Gael got back in with 35 seats. And at that point then I said I'm not interested in treating the political system in this country as legitimate anymore. Um, or at least morally legitimate. Nobody can deny that Fine Gael did indeed get 35 seats in the Doyle. In the same way that nobody can deny that Joe Biden has now won the US presidency. But the question is, what did they win and how did they go about winning it? 
what did they win and how did they go about winning it um what we have seen then since february of 2020 is that the irish people are in the process and it's only in the early stages of reaping a bitter pill for their stupidity in allowing 35 Fine Gael TDs to get back into the doyle. Well, what was the alternative, you could ask? The alternative was anybody else. Because not only do we have 35 Fine Gaelers in the doyle, but we also have 18 Greens. And what Fine Gael and the Greens have in, co- in common is that they are opposed to civil liberties. They are opposed to constitutional protections for small, weak individuals. And that they are big business, big government, communists. That may sound like an exaggeration, but in fact they are. A paradigm shifted in 2020, and I'm not talking necessarily about the US only. Ostensibly, there was this pandemic. Now, what happened was, through many years, we look at it in retrospect now, through many decades of grooming, a awful lot of what Thomas Sheridan refers to as the cheese brains were automatically triggered into imagining that if there's this pandemic that the government can come in to help you. That's new. That's a first in world history, actually, when you think about it, that we can expect the government to make the nasty germs go away. But this shows the extent to which so many people have, over such a long period of time, been groomed into thinking that big government can sort out all their problems. Well, it hasn't, because the pandemic, even by their own criteria, has not gone away. We were told three weeks to flatten the curve. Well, how did that turn out? Back then, when they began to close down businesses in Ireland in March, I said to anybody who owned a small business, get out now. Forget about your small business and cut your losses. Sometimes in life, however unfair or unjust it might be, you have to accept reality. What has happened with Biden is unfair and unjust, but it is the reality. It is the reality. And the same happened in March of 2020, in which it was unprecedented for government to interfere in such a widespread way in people's lives as they did in Ireland. And as we know, Captain Austin Fitz will tell you, these psychopaths live in fear they live in fear of all of us stopping fearing them bullies thrive on fear once you stop fearing a bully then they're finished already and our government in ireland are bullies but they're also incompetent i look at simon harris and then you look at the comments that harris gets on twitter and that's because simon harris blocks more people than a Dutch dyke and therefore Harris grooms who is as a public representative Harris has decided in his capacity as a publicly paid representative to censor who gets onto his public Twitter that is questionable in its own right I don't intend to take a case to force that one I don't have a particular interest there but Simon Harris is more obviously inadequate than even Leo Varadkar and that is saying an awful lot because Varadkar is a very inadequate man I remember talking to a woman in Hoth about three years ago and she's a very polite woman she said honestly Christian I do think that Simon Harris under an objective assessment could register significantly on the autistic scale yeah I said I, I hadn't looked at Harris so hard back three years ago but yes I would agree with that woman 100% now Harris tweets and behaves himself like a 12-year-old. Yet he got his seat back. Okay, it was on the 15th count. Okay, Biden has got the presidency. But he got it. Nobody else got it. So their legitimacy comes from the fact that constitutionally they're entitled to occupy that place. Constitutionally, Simon Harris is entitled to be a TD. And then constitutionally, he's entitled to be the minister for whatever he is this week education the fact that he failed university well you know i mean the man is physically incapacitated almost and he was minister for health so 
Thomas Sheridan talks about a parallel reality and he's right. Donald Trump should not run for election again unless there's a very major change in circumstance. I think, oh, I mean, he could go for it theoretically in 2024. I think he should not because time moves on. There'll be an awful lot of time between now and 2024. And there are very few people with the charisma of Donald Trump in a very particular way that he had when he was president. But the reality is that we will, it's very likely that we'll be in an extremely different place in 2024 from even where we are today on the 7th of January 2021. So, what's Trump to do? Well, do you think he's going to go out quietly? No. Do I think he's going to go out legitimately? Well, he has to. Trump is also a constitutionalist and he's a Republican in every sense of the word. He's not going to fight this. In other words, he's not going to chain himself to the Oval Office desk. He's going to go when he has to go. I hope he does not attend the inauguration. I really hope he does not legitimise it by condescending to be there. I hope he does not grace it with his presence. Um, but whether he likes it or not, he's now come out and joined all of us out here. We're all together. He's now our leader, whether we like it or not. He is the most prominent person in the world at the moment to realise what it's like when this crowd of people gets together and steals something from you that should have legitimately been yours because the presidency should legitimately have been his. It's not. He's not going to get to be president in two weeks, but that doesn't make it morally proper. I know myself from my own experience when you go to court and where a law has been put in place that was designed to stop you from getting a right. In Ireland, we have a defamation act that came in in 2009 and you only now have one year to start a defamation action against somebody who you claim has defamed you. Then when you look closer into the law, the clock starts ticking from the first moment that it can be claimed that that person has defamed you. So you have to get a case on in the High Court or the Circuit Court, but usually the High Court, for a defamation action within one year. So that creates a big reward to a defendant to try and stifle a case or to try and frustrate a case by hiding their identity, by hiding various features. And that was done to me. Um, I took it to the High Court. I took it to the Court of Appeal. I took it to the Supreme Court. I lost in all instances. And in its ruling in the Supreme Court... Mr Justice Frank Clark wrote in his ruling in my case that a person has a right to protect their good name because it's enshrined in our constitution. You have Our constitution is explicit. You have the right to protect your good name but just not through recourse to the courts. Oh well that's just brilliant isn't it? So if somebody's defaming me and I lose because he or she managed to frustrate me for a year and a day I have the right to protect my good name, but just not by suing him. Well, anybody will tell you, you don't have a right that you can't enforce in court. Anybody from Ireland who knows Irish law and Irish news, I'd ask them to reflect upon something. When did you last see somebody win a defamation action in this country? Think about that one. Because my own case that I'm referring to has actually been quoted in at least two other subsequent cases where people also lost... So I have actually, without wanting to toot my horn here, I have cut the jurisprudence because representing myself, I was the only one who could afford to go to the High Court, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. I went all the way with it. But I have accepted the fact that I lost. It wasn't right. It wasn't fair. But yes, it is legal. A lot of the free tards talk about something not being lawful and not... Da -da 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 -da. What they really mean is the fact that something is enshrined in law doesn't make it right. Don't forget that the Holocaust was illegal by the German Civil and Criminal Code. What they did in the Holocaust, they were not committing a crime by German law, but eventually Nuremberg found that they committed what's called a crime against humanity. That's right, Nuremberg was right. But what has happened to Trump is exactly the same as what has happened to me, albeit written on a larger scale. <clears throat> it is legally legitimate what has happened to Trump. What happened to me was legal, but it does not make it fair. It does not make it right. 
A person in Ireland has a constitutional right to protect their good name. Well, that's written in the Constitution. But the 2009 Defamation Act can only be construed as having been designed to deliberately make it impossible for somebody to win. Because I brought another defamation action against another party and I did it within one year. So I got a full hearing in the circuit court and I got a full hearing in the high court. I believe that the high court judge who heard that second case was sympathetic to me because he wrote in his ruling that the Defamation Act effectively allows anybody to say what they want about anyone because it makes the definition in Ireland of defamation so tight that it's now virtually impossible even okay you get your case on in a year but it's virtually impossible now to even win if you go to a full hearing and I did go to a full hearing and I lost so what this actually does is it gives me in two instances a cause of action against the state at a human rights level for having deprived my right to protect my good name in that action against the state I can also seek to have the defamation act struck down as unconstitutional to my mind the growing jurisprudence around the 2009 defamation act including prominently myself but the others who followed in the wake of me where my case has been quoted by the judges in the other cases is creating a growing bank of jurisprudence that's proving that the constitutional right to protect your good name has been stolen from people. This is not, of course, getting onto RTE or the Irish Times. They want to tell us all how racist we are. RTE wants to tell us how great Biden is and all the rest of it. So... One should not want something too hard because it might actually happen. A lot of people wanted Donald Trump to lose the presidency. Well, they got it. He's lost the presidency. But what's going to replace him? Because Biden is absolutely in the pocket of the communists. The Democrats are, you know, they map over almost directly to Fine Gael. They're not in favour of private business. They're not in favour of small people. The Democrats are not. They're big, big, big business. They're a corporate party like Fine Gael. Fianna Fáil is not a corporate party that way. They're mistaken for that because they haven't taken charge of their own PR that w- in that regard. I made a decision last year, 2020, that I would never run for political office. I think I was somewhat ahead of Donald Trump in that regard because I think Trump is waking up to that one as well. I made that decision based on an accumulation of things, but particularly for me, the last straw was the Irish general election of 2020, in which Fine Gael got back to 35 seats. Our elections are not open to credible charges of electoral fraud the way they are in the US. So I'm happy to believe that Fine Gael won those seats because enough people are stupid enough to vote for them. And that is the word I'd use. If you vote for Fine Gael, you're stupid. I could spend another two hours talking about Fine Gael's appalling track record in government since 2011. The wholesale corporate corruption, the breaking of the rules, the changing of legislation, everything designed to make a certain elite business inside, mainly circled around Dublin, rich and to make them unaccountable for it. That was Fine Gael. It wasn't Fianna Fáil. Fianna Fáil never ever in office did anything comparable to Fine Gael from 2011 onwards. Irish Water, the Children's Hospital and so many other things. There was enough evidence before the people in this country if they were concerned to go and find it before the general election of 2020 and they still let 35 Fine Gael TDs back in to allow Varadkar to just hobble Micheál Martin because this let, leads on to something else. Stixie calls Joe Biden an asterisk presidency. Yeah, that's a brilliant analysis. I love the metaphor. Stixie's a brilliant commentator. Brilliant, brilliant commentator. One of the best out there, Stixie is. One of the best in the English language, and he's dead fair. And he knows the system. He knows the Constitution. He doesn't make claims. Stixie doesn't make claims that he hasn't researched. So he's a very clever guy. He's very on the mark, Stixie is. I'm a big fan of Stixie. I've been following him for years. Stixie describes Biden as an asterisk presidency. Absolutely. And Micheál Martin is an asterisk Taoiseach. And what we have in common between the Republic of Ireland and the United States is that this office of the most prominent politician in the land, Ireland has a presidency, but it's not an executive presidency. It's not like the US presidency. 
Mihol Martin and his accolades, such as they might be, desperately, desperately wanted Mihol to be Thishok. Mihol had to be Thishok. Uh, regardless of anything else, Biden had to be president. Regardless of anything else. Well, now, how's that going to work out for you? How's that going to turn out? Because it looks like we are now in the next six months. I predicted it in November. I was wrong. I predicted Trump would win. I was wrong. It looks like the world economy is going to crash worse than 1720. The biggest economic crash in world history was not even 1920. People all talk about 1929. It wasn't 1929. It was 1720. The South Sea Bubble. And the South Sea Bubble caused the economy of Great Britain to contract by 30% in the space of about five years. A contraction of the economies of the United States, the United Kingdom, the European Union, the Republic of Ireland, and the other first world Western countries by 30% now in today's context would be destitution. That is, it's just a dry percentage when you put it that way, but when you look at it in real terms, that would be an economic catastrophe, unprecedented. Yet now here in Ireland, we've got another three month lockdown. Biden has said that he's committed to a lockdown. They're doing it again in Britain. So, they must be either deliberately attempting to destroy the private economy of all of these areas or they're reckless to it. I believe Micheál Martin is reckless to it. I don't believe he's in any way substantial enough to know what's going on here. Varadkar, you see, people give Varadkar a fool's pardon because he is below par. I mean, it's quite obvious when you look at Varadkar. When he puts on the mask, you can see it in the eyes. But people expected more of Micheál Martin. But maybe they were wrong. I expected Donald Trump to get a second term and I was wrong. So we can be wrong about these things. You know what? I was up in Hoth today laughing in the coffee shop and in, in the newspaper shop. You know, I said to them all, well, I said, do you remember I told you all about Trump winning? Well, I was wrong. And they all laughed and they said, we all get things wrong. Everybody was just laughing. Nobody was even gloating at me because I'd been going around for ages saying to everybody, Trump's going to win, Trump's going to win, Trump's going to win, you know. And I think just the way we were all laughing at it today shows something else, that it's not the end of the world. Clinton supporters in 2016, I mean, it was comical. It was comical. I, you know, I, Jesus, that's what I miss. I would have loved Trump to get a second term just to see all the cat ladies melt down again. I mean, that would have been just brilliant. You know, it was fabulous when that happened in 2016. All the, the woman with the hat crying at the laptop when she was expecting Hillary to win. And it was so, you know, it was taken from her. And the Democrats prepared. They spent four years preparing for this. They spent four years preparing for this because that was a stolen election and Trump did win it. Trump did get the vote. Well, he didn't win it, obviously, but Trump got the votes. But this then ties back. Congress has the final say on who becomes US president. Was Congress last night going to have the courage to turn around and say, no, this is not legitimate? No, they didn't. And that could be a very bitter pill for them to swallow indeed that could be the bitterest of harvests for congress so they got what they wanted they're getting a biden presidency and Michal martin got it he wanted he got to be Thishuk. but we're now going in with biden and martin to one of the worst economic outlooks that has ever been in front of us already varadkar is talking about when he resumes the post of Thishuk. I mean, for goodness sake, Martin has only been in for about seven or eight months. But I said this at the time. Michal Martin's a sucker. He's taking on a poison chalice here because Varadkar's a psychopath. Seriously. And a psychopath doesn't operate within boundaries and a psychopath is not to be taken at his or her word. In relation to the individual who I sued and lost against, I got a letter from his solicitor before I went on in the Court of Appeal in which the solicitor said, our client does not believe that you are a violent individual. Our client absolutely will not discuss you with anyone, including his staff. Our client will fully respect your right to your good name. Our client will 
uh, fully respect your right to privacy. If anybody contacts our client to discuss you with them, he will make it clear that he cannot. We trust that this is good enough. And I said, why did it take you seven years to write that letter? Your client's a liar and so are you. I said, certainly your client in terms of his claim that I'm a violent criminal is obviously wrong. But I recorded him in a video saying he stood over it. He stood over his claim of me being a violent criminal. Well, let him go into court and defend that. Obviously, he stands over it. So, you know, um, this is the, it's the same thing with um, Michal Martin. It's the same thing. You know, um, the, the fact that they occupied the position legitimately don't want something too much it might actually come true so what has happened then with that defamation case is i didn't accept that letter they were lying because i feel that with that defendant well i i said to the solicitor on the phone i said i can't trust that letter your client is not trustworthy i said we have to go to court to iron this out you know i said i do not trust you Okay, I said, I appreciate that you as a solicitor or instructor to write that letter by your client, but it should have been written seven years ago. And that's the same with Faradkar. Faradkar is fundamentally untrustworthy. He has admitted openly twice to interfering in public selection processes in this country. That is a specific listed indictable offence here. No, nobody said it any, a word about it in the mainstream media. They just glossed over it the way they do. The way the mainstream media works here is either they tell lies or they give a half-assed version of the events which they then ignore and brush away. They did that with Roderick O'Gorman. Although they told lies about O'Gorman as well. They told a lot of lies there. But that's how it works. If something uncomfortable comes up about somebody in power, RTE and the Irish Times either ignore it, they lie about it, or if they are forced to admit it, they then admit it quickly and then go silent about it afterwards. Varadkar is a psychopath and he does not have boundaries. Michal Martin has hobbled his entire tenure as Taoiseach on the whims of a psychopath. And not even a very intelligent psychopath, because some of them are more competent or at least can put up the act better. Varadkar cannot even hide his duper's delight. He cannot even hide that childish, inadequate, disabled glee that he has. Putting on the mask shows shows the inadequacy in Varadkar's eyes. You know? I who who would want to be Taoiseach in a situation like that? And this is why I don't want to run for political office. Ah oh, no, I said uh, no. This this is a cesspit. So actually, however aggrieved Trump may feel, and I'm sure that he genuinely feels aggrieved, and I feel aggrieved for him, in the same way I felt aggrieved when I lost that defamation action because I hadn't brought it within one year. It could be for the best. <clears throat> Biden, by no objective standards, is morally legitimate in the role of president. Um, OK, certainly the leprechaun element here in Ireland is saying, Oh, be to hockey smoke, isn't it great? We call from Bellina. And Biden uh, had uh, a third cousin three centuries ago from Bellina. So he's an Irish American. Well, you will. Well, Great, 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 lovely. We'll see how that turns out for you. Donald Trump has property in Ireland. Biden does not. Donald Trump put his own money into this country and created employment in this country. Biden did not. But no, let's ingratiate ourselves to Biden. Well, they deserve whatever they get. They deserve whatever they get. So I'm not going to say that John, Donald Trump should go out graciously. He should go out ungraciously. And he should not go to the inauguration. He should continue to speak out against what has happened here. And I have no doubt that he will. You know, now Trump is on the outside. Now he's out here with us. He doesn't have to be nice about it. He doesn't have to be gracious. He doesn't have to be polite. You know, the, the idea now that he's going to play the game from this point onwards, he'll leave the presidency. That's all he has to do. It's the same with me in the court case. I accept that I lost. I don't have to be happy about it. And I don't have to keep my mouth shut. So, 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 Trump is now, whether he likes it or not, he's now joined us out here in the land of the red pills and the black glasses. So, he has legitimised himself, Trump has, he's legitimised us out here in the alternative scene. You know, and it's not over, it's not only just, be, it, it hasn't just begun. 
we're seeing the deranged arrogance of these people with that vile freak Kamala Harris you know um, and when people find in the next six or seven months or 12 months or whenever it happens that their livelihood is gone that their home is gone and that the state is going to take over their lives in a way that isn't even imaginable yet, even now. Because we have this groomed situation where people have been groomed over a long time to believe that the state will just come in and do everything for them. Well, let's see how that's working out. We know out here that the government is largely your enemy and that they tell lies all the time. We know that. And... Um, a brilliant guy, Jamie Fletcher, he has a great video up. I'll link it at the bottom of this section. Jamie says, if you still believe that there is legitimacy in the COVID-19 thing here, the lockdowns, masks and all of that, if you at this stage now, here we are on the 7th of January 2021, if you still believe that the COVID-19 thing is this terrible pandemic that's going to kill everybody, blah, 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 then you are a victim of a cult. And that's right, Jamie is right. That's a cult. Because the evidence that's in front of your own two eyes is that COVID-19 is, is, I mean, I say this conservatively, little more than a flu. But then look at the Chinese and how the Chinese have spent so long going around wearing masks and then wonder who's behind all this. 